thing that we haven't said so far in the first few minutes of this show that actually probably is is making Donald Trump be drawn up like that and off balanced and nervous and if Donnie's right frightened is Bob Mueller. Uh, Bob Mueller is moving forward while Donald Trump uh, golfs for 17 days straight. Bob Mueller is not golfing. Bob Mueller is working. Uh, he's getting to the bottom of the facts and he's getting to the truth and he's going to apply the law to the truth. And that may be something that has Donald Trump very nervous as he goes out and golfs every day, even while he tells people that he does not. Now, very interesting yesterday, he was attacking Mitch McConnell, telling Mitch to get back to work when, of course, he was on a 17 day vacation uh, where he occasionally got a little work in. This is what he said about Mitch McConnell yesterday. I just want him to get repeal and replace done. I've been hearing repeal and replace now for seven years, but I've only been doing this for two years. And I've really only been doing this for six months, but I've been running. So now it's almost two years. And I, all I hear is repeal and replace. And then I get there and I said, where's the bill? I want to sign it first day. And they don't have it. And they passed repeal and replace, but they never had a president, frankly, or a Senate that was going to do it. They said, Mitch, get to work and let's get it done. They should have had this last one done. They lost by one vote. For a thing like that to happen is a disgrace. And frankly, it, it shouldn't have happened. That I can tell you. It Senator shouldn't have happened. Senator McConnell consider stepping down as majority leader. There's some conservative uh, analysts, including Sean Hannity, who say it's time for him to retire. Well, I'll tell you what, if he doesn't get repeal and replace done, and if he doesn't get taxes done, meaning cuts and reform, and if he doesn't get a very easy one to get done infrastructure, if he doesn't get them done, then you can ask me that question. It's unbelievable. He's blaming Mitch McConnell and the Republicans for not passing a health care bill while he was doing absolutely nothing but getting in the way making it more difficult, insulting House members, saying that their bill was mean, going all over the place, changing his positions every day. And he did. One week we counted Casey Hunt that he changed his position three or four times. My gosh, Mitch McConnell, Paul Ryan, and the Republicans on Capitol Hill must be steamed right now at Donald Trump. What's the reaction? Uh, Joe, Mitch McConnell and, and Donald Trump spoke not yesterday, but the day before. And in between these tweets uh, and before Donald Trump made all of those remarks. So I think that tells you a lot about how that phone call went. I mean, look, the, the sense among Mitch McConnell's camp is that the president does not understand how things get done in Washington, that this is counterproductive, that he should be focused on the crisis with North Korea. He's making demands that they think completely misunderstand the legislative process in a fundamental way. His calls to change the filibuster to 51 votes, they only needed those 50 votes. They couldn't get 50 Republicans on health care. You're right, he's changed his position back and forth. He was never clear, this is what I want the policy policy to be. He's not out there selling it. And when he tried to get involved, he did things like have his interior secretary call Lisa Murkowski, a vote they thought was gettable, uh, and, and made her so angry that there was no way she was going to come back around uh, and vote that way. So, you know, I think there is a real risk for President Trump here because he does need, and there's a feeling among uh, McConnell's team that he needs Mitch McConnell and other Republicans if he's ever going to pull off the things that voters ultimately are going to judge him for. Is he actually able to get anything done? Uh, so I think that's the feeling on, on Capitol Hill. Now, there have also been some calculations that Republicans have made on Capitol Hill that I think have prevented a scenario uh, where they might be able to work with Democrats on, say, a big infrastructure package. I do think there are some Democrats who are going to be in a position where they want to vote for something like that if it actually has uh, the right makeup. The, frankly, the Democrats are in a tougher position going into 2018 uh, in the Senate. But uh, the, the other thing, Joe, is you mentioned Jeff Flake and Dean Heller at the top of the show. That right. is what is going to make or break this relationship at the end of the day. And they, I, I think if, if, the, if the president goes after those people, he's going to lose Mitch McConnell completely. Well, and, and he's already started doing that, Elise Jordan, going after, you know, if Bob Mercer is going after Jeff Flake, that's Donald Trump going after Jeff Flake. Same with Breitbart. I mean, I'm not, you know, I had a certain... Um, 
senator uh, put somebody up against me and denied it a thousand times, but he wanted to keep me busy so I couldn't get involved in this primary. I knew all along, and I never forgot it. And, he, you know, it, it's something that uh, to this day, <laughs> if, I were, if I were in Congress and the guy asked me for something, I'd smile and say, let me get back to you. They don't understand. And by the way, if they did it to my friend, as you know, it would be worse. Members come together. And so for Donald Trump to be clumsy enough to, first of all, attack Mitch McConnell, then to threaten Lisa Murkowski, because when you threaten a member, especially a senator, you have you've just told them they, they have to fight back, and she did. And now to be doing this to Dean Heller and Jeff Flake, he doesn't have, he doesn't even have 49 votes now. I mean, good luck. I mean, getting 46, 47. It seems, Elise, that every day he's making his job harder. Well, he's just had this attitude of being a wrecking ball coming in through Washington. And, you know, nothing is going to be sta left standing in the wake of this. And if he wants to have any hope of having any legislative success, he's setting himself up for disaster. And it's just delusional, the idea that he can forge some coalition with Democrats. Why would they have any incentive whatsoever to vote with him, to come with his side, to come to his side? It just is, it's astonishing to me, the lack of political judgment that this White House exhibits on a daily basis. Yeah, John Heilman, what, what is the long-term game plan? Have you heard anybody in the administration tell you Hey, listen, we, we're going to keep insulting the Republicans, but we think we can get a bipartisan deal on health care, on infrastructure. Is there any game plan at all? Uh, look, I, Joe, I don't think there's a game, game plan at all on the legislative front. And it, it sent, I sense at least some degree of, of, of just almost giving up on the, the possibility of getting a lot done. This is a purely political strategy. Um, I, I, in some ways, I, I, no one's saying this quite explicitly, but I think there's a, a, already an eye towards um, what does President Trump need to do to consolidate his base and thinking about what's going to happen for him four years from now, as opposed to anything that, inter that any intervening events, right? And so the notion right. of him as a disruptive force, as an outsider, as a man without a party, as a man who is uh, breaking uh, breaking up the old Washington order, that it was what was appealing for him in 2016, and what his, the people around him and what President Trump thinks is the enduring source of his appeal. And and again, if if all you if you had this very narrow view and you're only taking your lessons from 2016. There's a certain almost kind of weird logic to that, but of course, that's a very, very narrow view. And 2016 is not uh, is not the only thing that, that that should guide a president going forward because he's going to be judged next time, not just as a candidate or by his ideas or how he presents himself, but by what he's actually accomplished over the course of his first term. Yeah, he's going to be judged by everything he promised and everything that he didn't deliver. Right. And that base that everybody was talking about may have been 45 percent on election day or 48 percent. It's 32, 33, 34 percent now. Uh, he's, he's got to get things accomplished if he wants that base to grow. Still at on Morning Joe. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.